birds have been trying to bring a bird of prey back to East Anglia and the rest of the UK. And now they've had their first flutter of success. And this week, the osprey chicks have been spreading their wings for the first time. We were up with the early birds this morning to watch them in action. The early days for these tiny creatures. Unbeknown to them, the eyes of the world are watching them grow and getting ready for their first flights. And this week, the moment finally arrived. The chicks left their nests. These birds of prey had all but disappeared. They became extinct in England after being persecuted and losing their habitats. Here at Rutland Water, they've been trying to reintroduce them. It's one of only three breeding sites in the UK and the first flight of the chicks is an exciting time. But the chicks have their biggest challenge yet to come. Now they need to practice their flying as they prepare to migrate. The chicks are migrating entirely on instinct alone. They've got nobody showing them the way. They've only been flying for a few weeks. So they, they do find it difficult and the sad reality is that a lot of them won't survive. But out of a nest of three chicks, perhaps one of them will be back in two years time to hopefully build up the colony. Each bird will have to fly 200 miles a day to West Africa. At night, they rest and catch fish. Survival is key. The more who make it back to breed, the better the chances are of ospreys flying all over the country again. Fatima Manji, BBC The Keast. Oh, fabulous, huh? Oh, they were so cute when they were so little, didn't they? <laughs> Well, there's rugby, tennis and Formula One, so plenty to look forward to this weekend for all our sports fans. But let's start with the European Athletics Championships and some disappointing news. Here's James Burridge. Hello there, Stuart. Hi, Amanda. Welcome to Franklin's Gardens. It is rather strange being here in July. Normally I start the season here in September, but more from the gardens in a moment. Let's deal with the breaking news coming out of Barcelona that Corby athletes Will Sharman has disastrously gone out. He has uh, full started. The rules have changed in the hurdles these days. It now means that if you do one full start, you're out of it straight away. So all the hope and expectation that many of his fans and supporters were hoping that he would get a medal in Barcelona, that is now gone. And he was pretty gutted when he spoke to the BBC a short time ago. It was like a nightmare. Um, I think this new rule is horrible. I've never been one to predict the gun, and I didn't try and predict the gun there. Um, running it through in my head, well, ultimately it's a lack of discipline. As, I mean, everyone else was waiting. Why couldn't I? Well, from athletics to tennis, it's been a brilliant week for Elena Baltaccia. In the past 24 hours, she knocked out the French Open champion, Francesca Schiavone. Uh, it's been brilliant for her. It's her best ever performance in her career so far. Uh, sadly, though, in the past few hours, she's just been beaten in the uh, quarterfinals by Germany's Andrea Petkovic. But that will mean her ranking has shot up, so it's been a fantastic week for Elena. Well, on to the seven side, seven minutes each way. It's almost the 2020 cricket for rugby, you could say. Let's speak with a man that many in the rugby world will know very well indeed. Dusty Hare, former England international, and now with the Saints Academy. Dusty, this is all very new to Franklin's Gardens. Yeah, here we are in July playing rugby, yes. It's, uh, and, of course, it's good British weather. It's, uh, it's beginning to rain, so uh, hopefully it won't dam damage the game too much. And of course, sevens, actually, if we're being serious about it, the profile of sevens is expanding all the time with the Commonwealth Games and the Olympics now involved. Yeah, very much so. And there's a great opportunity uh, for some of the lads to represent their country playing sevens. And, uh, you know, we've got four of them playing for Northampton tonight. Yeah. The cynic in me, though, Dusty, is saying that this is a money spinner for the clubs. Because, to be honest, we're not going to be seeing any proper uh, match rugby until September. Well, yeah, I mean, things have got to get, make a start, haven't they? And, uh, and this, is, this is the start. You know, who knows in two or three years time you know the, the bigger players might uh, might get onto the pitch so uh, it's a start tonight and uh, it's a great chance for the academy lads to play in front of six seven thousand people best of luck let's have a quick chat with some of the fans who we've managed to bring into Lucky's tonight uh, bruce and tim have uh, just turned up bruce you wouldn't normally come i imagine to a sevens game what do you think about tonight i think it's going to be a good evening as dusty said there's lots of the saints academy lads playing tonight and it's a chance for them to get out in the field and let the fans see who they are Tim, what do you think of sevens? Is it, do you think it works? Very entertaining game, and with the pitch looking like it is at the moment, I think it'd be fantastic. 5,000 or so people in, so it should be really good. Enjoy tonight. Coverage, at, uh, I think it's starting here at 7.30, so it'll be interesting to see how the 5,000 people react here. Just before I go, Formula One, of course, is Lewis Hamilton. I see Dusty Hare again. I, used to, I yeah. remember when he was playing fullback for England, kicking all those points. 
I think he still holds the world record for the number of points scored by an individual. 7,000 and something. Wow. Now, ask most seven-year-olds to paint a picture, and you might get a matchstick painting of mum and dad or something very basic showing a house and garden. Yes, but us mummies absolutely love them. But Kieran Williamson <laughs> is just... I'm not a mummy, by the way, just <laughs> in case you're wondering. <laughs> and daddy's too, of course. <laughs> but Kieran is just seven, and already he has the art world buzzing. Today, at his first exhibition in Norfolk, his work was snapped up within half an hour, raising a total of, wait for it, £150,000. <laughs> they began arriving three days ago. Some have flown from Arizona to be in the North Norfolk town of Holt. At the centre of the attention is a shy seven-year-old and a somewhat bewildered family. For a seven-year-old to be painting like that, to me, I, I definitely would make the trip again just to uh, have the opportunity to, to purchase one of the paintings. Karen's talent was first discovered when he was five. We went on holiday down to Cornwall. We went down, Karen and myself, to the harbour and got him back and he bathed and went to bed and in the morning when we awoke he got up and she was head drawn out the harbour and he really progressed very quickly from then on. Since Kieran featured on Look East he's mastered oil, pastels and watercolour. Normally an artist concentrates on one particular style or one particular medium but he's able to encompass all three mediums into his work. He loves the Norfolk scenery around him and spends a lot of time on the coast. Some of these paintings have sold for £10,000, an investment buyers can enjoy, while no doubt Karen's talent matures and his reputation grows. Maria Veronese, BBC Look East, Holt. Just in case you're wondering, when he came in here and drew the picture, he took it away with him. Should have got it signed and kept it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time for the weather now. And Julie, perhaps you could get him to draw you a nice picture for the weather. That would be an excellent <laughs> get idea. Get him to sign it too. <laughs> oh, God, honestly, what's he like? So, uh, let's start with the satellite, shall we? Uh, you can see...